Um, we are here today with Ambassador Philip Sanka Marmo. Uh, we're very pleased to welcome you here today at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer a few questions with us. So we'd like to begin by asking you a few questions just to find out your views on various topical issues regarding your speech. Um, and so first, of course, being here at the Institute, we would like to ask you, what is your personal understanding of cultural diplomacy? Uh, uh, first, uh, may I take the, this opportunity to thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it's better to begin with uh, the term culture. Uh, culture uh, is the product of society. The way society imagine manages its affairs, whether it's language, whether it's the way they dance, the way they prepare their food, and so on. So cultural diplomacy begins with the society. It's collaboration between one society and another. And because the world now is a global village, mm -hmm. so uh, cultural diplomacy now has taken another new face altogether. Uh, having the face of globalization, uh, having uh, one almost one culture all over the world, with the exception of people from one part of the world uh, to another part of the world having uh, different perceptions. But otherwise, we look at the world uh, in the same cultural perspective. So if we spoke of cultural diplomacy, is the way our countries pursue their national interest vis-a-vis -vis other states uh, using their cultural background. Okay. Um, earlier on in your speech, you mentioned that um, you do not believe that the Chinese presence in Africa has an ulterior motive. Um, however, perhaps some may disagree to this. For example, specifically in Ghana, um, a couple of years back, Ghana discovered oil and they had a partnership with the Chinese. Um, with this discovery, many citizens, Ghanaian citizens, believe that um, there will be an increase in job opportunities. However, it appears that most of these um, jobs went to the na Chinese nationals. In addition to that, um, it has been reported that um, the Chinese nationals in Ghana were illegally mining gold which caused some of um, the government to deport some back to China. Um, what are your views on this? Um, and do you have, can you suggest any solutions to these issues? Thank you so much for that uh, very uh, fascinating question. Let's begin, let's begin with the fact that not only Ghana, but the whole of Africa is now very attractive mm -hmm. to investors. So there is a competition for investors to come to Africa to invest, mm -hmm. including Chinese. When I s say competition, uh, I hope you know what I mean. In the competition, uh, uh, countries, companies use all skills available. Uh, as a person, who grew up in East Africa, uh, when Chinese have been contributing to the development of East African countries, mm -hmm. the time when Chinese were not rich people, when China as a country was not a, was not a rich country, but uh, complemented our efforts, not only to bring development, mm -hmm. but to get independence, uh, to get rid of apartheid in South Africa. Now uh, is the is 21st century, uh, the century of globalization, the century of competition for raw materials. China is a country of about 1.4 billion people. Mm. And uh, China, as another country, must make sure that this uh, uh, 1.4 
ሲል ወንቲኮ መስሊም በተ ላይ አንቱ ዱዳት ቻይና ማስ ኢንቨስት አብሮድ ኢንክሉዲንግ አፍሪካ አንድ አስዌ ዴ ኮምፒቲሽን ካሚ ሶ አዘ ኢንዲኬትድ ኤሊያ ቻይኒዝ አ ኖት ቱ ብሌም ፎር ዋትስ ሃፕኒንግ ኢን አፍሪካ uh because it's not a policy of china to extract natural resources of africa uh free of charge or using in the language looting china does not loot china negotiates with with each african country and they agree and they, they normally uh work to the word they follow the word of the agreement and that's why i really indicated that our officials must be very careful they must be very skillful in negotiating contracts and agreements not only with chinese but with any other company from other part of the world because the very genuine chinese uh, policy particularly with africa is win win situation and for those of us who have been collaborating with china we feel that uh, they are genuine in that policy of win win situation um african nations are trying hard to maintain and strengthen relations with china and the west do you feel as if enough uh, opportunities are being created within like for example the Tanzan tanzania and is the government putting enough effort to strengthen ties with its neighbors not just you know the china and west but rather its own african nations well that's a that's a, a very appropriate question because uh we are supposed to trade within ourselves in the region we are now doing a very good business in east africa for instance uh, tanzania is the only country which now self sufficient in food we produce our own food and we sell uh, uh, the the excess to our neighbors we don't sell maize we at the, at the moment we have extra we have excess maize we don't sell maize to china we sell maize to to, to kenya to somalia to southern sudan Uh, we've come even at the stage of giving southern sudan and aid about 1000 tons of cereal this year uh, so that's where we we begin we sell uh, uh metals like gold we sell uh, coal to china but we also sell uh, timber to china we sell skins we sell excess coffee and cashew nuts processed cashew nut processed coffee we are not satisfied with that because the trade is one sided while we sell to china goods or products worth uh, 300 uh, uh, million to 400 million us dollars a year we import from china uh, goods worth more than 1 billion uh US dollars so we are trying our best to to increase our export to china particularly in products which in the area of products which we don't need like uh which we have in excess like coal like cashew nuts coffee cotton hides and so on uh so very briefly i can say we are doing good business with our neighbors but we also good do good business with our with 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 our chinese colleagues and with the europeans as well at the end of the day uh, the business is determined by prices uh, we sell coffee where the price is high and the, at the moment the price of coffee is very high in germany and in, in the whole of european union than in china so most of our coffee now find its way to the european union so we as well as we wish to have a balanced trade between 
China and Tanzania, China and other countries, and Tanzania and other countries. But at the end of the day, uh, it's uh, the, 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 the equation is dictated by, by, by trade, by rules of, of business and trade. Regarding the diplomatic ties between Germany and Tanzania, how can the relations between Germany and Tanzania lead to more development and progression in the future? Relations between Germany and Tanzania is very good. And it must be very good because uh, it's, not, it's not relations between government and government. It's relations between people and people. Uh, even when uh, the relations between government and government is not so perfect, uh, but there are uh, collaboration, there are contacts between uh, people to people. German, people of German origin have made Tanzania their home. There are about 4,000 of them now in Tanzania. Uh, most of them being in the business, but some are farmers and some cater for German tourists who come to, to Tanzania. German is now uh, number three uh, source of our, our, of our tourism uh, business uh, to be preceded only by the United States of America and the UK. We receive on average about 400,000 Germans. Uh, and um, that is uh, where we say the relationship between people and people. Uh, on the governmental level, our relations are very good. It's only uh, four months ago, the German foreign minister, His Excellency Senmia, visited Tanzania, and we signed so many uh, agreements. And as you know, uh, German, Germany among the members of the European Union is the major uh, donor uh, to Tanzania in the areas of environmental conservation, in the area of energy, health, and education. But mind you, uh, Germans have been in Tanzania for more than 100 years. They build railways uh, in our cities. You can find uh, all German buildings, you can find uh, all German churches, all German roads. Uh, so you cannot get rid of this history, and that's why uh, of necessity, the relation between Germany and Tanzania must be perfect. Following from the previous question, I have to ask, what is the future of the relationship between Tanzania and Zanzibar? Tanzania and Zanzibar? Mm -hmm. Zanzibar is part of Tanzania? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> incidentally, yeah. incidentally it's, a, it's an internal arrangement. As we speak now, there is a constitutional reform exercise in Tanzania. Uh, the constitution is being, is being changed so that uh, uh, the country can be well managed. For the past uh, 50 years, as you know, Tanzania has been very stable. We've been at peace to ourselves. We've been at peace to our neighbors. Uh, this constitution has taken us all these 50 years. And it's the constitution of two governments. The government of the United Republic of Tanzania and the government of Zanzibar. The government of the United Republic of Tanzania handles matters of the Union which you all know there are about 15, including foreign affairs, defense, uh, security, and so on. S and, uh, and the union government also manages affairs of the mainland Tanzania. Now, there seems to be a need to change the constitution so that Zanzibar may be given more power to manage her own affairs, particularly in areas, in economic areas, like uh, gas and oil and petroleum, in the areas of uh, 
particular uh, uh, areas of foreign relations. As, as you know, Zanzibar is unique. Zanzibar diaspora, for instance, in Oman, makes about 40% of the population of Oman. So Zanzibar would like to have some so we have a mechanism to have a representation in places like Oman. Zanzibar population is about more than 95% Muslim. So Zanzibar, as part of Tanzania, would like to be a member of the Organization of Islamic Countries. So maybe those are the areas which are being negotiated. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, there is no where in the draft constitution that uh, 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 that there will be two countries. There will be one, one country in the Republic of Tanzania, but having uh, that portion of the United Republic Zanzibar to have more power for her uh, uh, interests. Taking an, uh, um, a consideration that Tanzania is a democratic country, Recently, there is a statement from the chairman of the of the of the parliament of the new constitution, which are trying to reform the constitution, that uh, the minister of culture and uh, communication should take action against the media's, which are trying to to broadcast some kind of of news from the parliament. What do you say about that? Is there a freedom of media in Tanzania? I'm very happy that uh, you follow <laughs> developing in Tanzania on a day-to-day basis. If you have been following the press reports today, the chairman of the Constitutional Reform Assembly uh, today uh, denied that. He mentioned that he was quoted out of context. What he meant was that uh, uh, the, the press, the media, uh, should uh, should be uh, taking care of all all the, all the parties, not hearing from one side of the of the of the of the parliament, because there are, there are people who refuse to to join the parliament, the constituent assembly, and they are now uh, outside and they are calling press uh, and media audiences. What he meant was that when they interview uh, this group, they should always as well get uh, the, the view of the other side. That's those who are now in the Doma uh, debating the draft constitution. They should, the press, the media should balance itself to hear both sides, or the both parties concerned. And he was quoted today that yesterday he was quoted out of context. So thank you so much, uh, Honorable Ambassador Philip Sankamamo. We are very happy to have you at the ICD. It was a pleasure to have you today, and you're welcome next time.